I like to welcome everyone to uh, to the second of our um, recitation and meeting uh, class, or halakha, I should say. Um, and again, this is a, a sort of a round robin, so definitely, you know, people feel free to ask any questions and whatnot that they want to put out there. So, um, so without any further ado, um, go ahead and open the floor to uh, Sheikh Yasser. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How's everybody doing? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Well, I have some good news. Uh, the good news is that I am not uh, driving back from Dallas. I'm home now. <laughs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So, uh, yeah, that was, a, that was a trip that I had to take with my colleagues who went down um, mishap because I was on the road and you could not see me. But Alhamdulillah, I'm uh, back home and uh, everyone could see my screen. Inshallah. So, yes, uh, recitation and meaning of salah. Before we continue, I would like to say Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi jma'in. And uh, this is our second uh, class of recitation and meaning of salah. We make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He allows us to benefit from this, He allows me to share. Uh, what is beneficial for us and allows us to learn what is beneficial in Shana Ta'ala. May He allow us to develop and adopt humility and sincerity in Shana Ta'ala. Ameen. Ameen. So, just to take one step back, uh, I just want to cover that this in this series we will cover. Uh, inshallah ta'ala, proper way, proper method to recite the supplications of salah along with their meanings and significance. Uh, we will also go over the spiritual symbolism behind the supplications and physical gestures uh, during prayer. And we will also go over how to spiritually prepare our souls for salah. And the end goal of salah is connecting our souls with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that we can draw from the treasures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The format, as you will very soon see, inshallah ta'ala, is that we will go over the Arabic and make sure that we're pronouncing the Arabic uh, as accurately as possible, inshallah ta'ala, keeping the tajweed and everything in place, uh, like the proper pronunciation. And after that, we will go over the meaning of what we are reciting in salah, and then the third is we will go over, as I like to say, the spiritual symbolism behind what we're saying and what we're doing in Salah. So every, every part of Salah, we will have this three-step process. Arabic, then the translation, and then whatever relevant um, spiritual symbolisms there, there are there, um, we will go over those inshallah ta'ala. Now, what are, the, what are some of the goals of this series? Uh, I've listed three goals for all of us. Uh, inshallah ta'ala, at the end of this series, the goal is to be able to properly recite the supplications of salah, prayer, along with understanding their meanings and significance, you know, significance inshallah. Secondly, a goal that we have is to develop a deep appreciation of the supplications and physical gestures of Salah. And this will lead us to draw from the treasures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we find in the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his beloved companions, the Sahaba, that any kind of issue, any kind of challenge that they would have in life they would immediately resort to Salah and they were able to solve 
their problems, they were able to solve their worldly problems through prayer. And that is what prayer is, is designed to do, inshallah ta'ala. Now, uh, what did we go over last week, right? Uh, we went over the significant, uh, you know, significance of Adhan, the call to prayer, and how Adhan, the call to prayer, allows us to prepare for Salah. We went over um, what is being said in the call of prayer and uh, what and and why is it so important? What are the different implications of 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 those things? And then we also went over the history of Adhan last week. So that was uh, a brief recap of what we did last week. And today, inshallah ta'ala, tonight, as I would like to say, we will go over these four, thing, these four things. We will go over the takbir and uh, takbir, which is the starting of the prayer. We will go over the opening invocations of prayer, of salah, we will go over ta'awwud, right? Which is the a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. And then we will go over Surah Al-Fatiha tonight, insha'Allah. So tonight, in the next, I would say 45, 46 minutes, or I would say, you know, however long uh, we're able to be here tonight, we will go over these four things, insha'Allah. Now, before I continue, uh, I want to encourage questions if, if anyone has any questions, anybody wants to share uh, anything with us that could benefit us, inshallah ta'ala, please feel free to do so. Um, uh, I personally don't believe in uh, like feeling insecure about asking questions. Um, it is said, in Arabic, what this means is to ask a good question is half of knowledge, right? So I just wanted to put this out there that I'm a type of teacher that encourages questions and I like to have interactive discussions. Um, I'm not the type of person that just sits there and expects everyone to just sit, listen to what I have to say and don't even hear what, what everyone else is saying. So I just wanted to put that out there, right? So if you want to share anything, ask anything, please feel free to do so. Um, so these four uh, things on the screen, takbir, opening invocations, ta'awud, and surah fatiha, uh, at least to get, you know, half of the surah fatiha done, uh, or to cover a lot of it, that is the goal for tonight, inshallah. So now we know what's the plan for tonight. Now, what does takbir mean? Okay, and this is a term that we may come across. So Takbir is to say that Allahu Akbar, right? Takbir is to proclaim in Arabic by saying Allahu Akbar, okay? So here's uh, a close enough transliteration of the takbir. And when we, so when someone refers to takbir, what is being meant, what is, being meant is to say Allahu Akbar. What takbir means is Allah is the greatest. So in Arabic, it is Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. And in English, what this means is Allah is the greatest. Um, the spiritual symbolism behind the takbir is great. Uh, sometimes, subhanAllah, we come across verses of the Qur'an, we come across different ahadith or different narrations, traditions of the Holy Last Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they may be, they may appear to be small, right? Um, but subhanAllah, when you really get down to unpacking what's in there, you really begin to appreciate that, subhanAllah, there's so much to unpack here. So when we say we are starting our salah, we are beginning our salah, and we do so by saying Allahu Akbar, 
it's so much more than than simply raising our hands saying allahu akbar and then tying our hands wherever we wherever we are right on our chests on our bellies you know wherever it may be um it's so much more than that okay uh one of the points i want to mention that we find that scholars have said that the symbolism behind raising your hands when you're starting your salah right is you are signifying by standing there or by sitting there in the in a chair what have you the fact that you're raising your hands up to your ears up to your shoulders what have you it is as if you are throwing your worldly life behind you so when so let's say you're at work and you are offering your salah you're praying you're symbolizing that my job is behind me and allah is the greatest when you're at work when you're at when you're at home you're saying for that moment in your time in your life that my family and my and, and my worldly uh, chores are behind me and right now allah is the greatest right and 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 that is so beautiful to to think about right that you're not simply just standing there and 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 beginning your salah by just saying allahu akbar and okay let's do this no it's a mindset right it's a mindset that in this in these few moments in these 4 5 7 10 minutes that i am connecting myself with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first of all i am disconnecting myself from the world around me and i'm uh, and i am reconnecting myself with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and 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 that is the symbolism behind takbir that in this moment allah is greater than my job allah is greater than my family allah is greater than my responsibilities right now allah is greater than my business allah is greater than my source of income allah is greater than everything that i have right now takbir in in the books of jurisprudence in the books of fiqh is also called takbiri tahrima right takbiri tahrima which means that things that are usually permissible now become impermissible after you say this takbir right that after you say this takbir you're no longer able to eat you're now like you're you're not allowed to eat you're not allowed to drink you're not allowed to talk you're not you're not allowed to do any of those things you are standing there sitting there and worshiping allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is dedication that is that, that is discipline right so so again takbir means allahu akbar takbir is like this term means to say allahu akbar and allahu akbar right allahu akbar means allah is the greatest and we we may come across uh in our conversations or we may witness uh others around us uh they use this takbir in their conversations right uh that allahu akbar like allah is the greatest why because he allowed this to happen he allowed that to happen and he and you know allah saved me from this calamity allah saved me from that calamity right so takbir is 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 a part of salah is part of our prayer but it is not simply limited to prayer you know we will you know if you come across this in in conversations you're not going to you know just don't be weirded out by that right so the spirit of symbolism again behind the takbir is that as if you know it's you and your allah for for that moment in your in, in in that you know for that moment of your life allah that created you that is nourishing you that has given you everything that you have that that has blessed you in so many ways that you and i can i even imagine is your number one priority right now so are, are there any questions uh, regarding Uh, regarding this or uh, any questions any comments 
you know, I just want to make sure that I'm not talking to myself here. Right. Anyone else? Cool. All right. So I guess it's a. Uh, so yeah. So this is Takbir, right? Allahu Akbar. It means Allah is the greatest, and it's it's a mindset that everything is now behind me, and now Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is is my number one priority. Opening invocations. So when we start our salah, and we say Allahu Akbar and we are saying to Allah that, oh Allah, you are the greatest and you are my number one priority. Then after that, you tie your hands and then in Arabic, you recite the following words. Um, and these words are, are very, very powerful, right? So uh, I like to call these words opening invocations, you know, how you're able to start your salah. So the Arabic, right, uh, and this right here uh, in front of the first bullet point is uh, a very good transliteration of the words in Arabic. So uh, the first word is subhanaka, subhanaka. So we don't have the we don't have the Arabic in front of us, so I'm not able to uh, I'm not able to uh, point out um, the importance of um, like the ha and the ha and all of that, uh, but just you know try to pronounce subhanaka the h of subhanaka uh, from your throat right from your throat so subhanaka right subhanaka <clears throat> and then the next word is Allahumma. Allahumma. So we start off with Subhanaka Allahumma. Subhanaka Allahumma. And for those of us that want to repeat after me, please, you know, feel free to do so. Uh, Subhanaka Allahumma. And then W A Wa. So over time, when you know, when we get to practice more and more, we're able to say, "Subhanakallahumma." So to break the first two words down, you know, one step at a time, you say "Subhanaka," and then "Allahumma," and then over time through practice, you're able to say, by combining the two, you're able to say, "Subhanakallahumma." Subhanakallahumma. Wa, okay, wa. What helps in concentration of salah is to appreciate the meaning of what we're saying. And there are definitely uh, different things in the Arabic language that we're able to pick up so that we're able to appreciate what we're saying. So wa means and, right? So subhanakallahumma wa, okay? Bihamdika, bihamdika, subhanaka, Allahumma, wa bihamdika. So this H here in bihamdika is also to be pronounced with your throat, if possible. And and what do I mean? What do I mean by pronouncing it with your throat? Is that when you say ha, as you could hear me say ha, 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 uh, I'm using my throat muscles to restrict airflow a little bit, which makes that sound, right? So, bihamdika, bihamdika. So, subhanaka, Allahumma, wa bihamdika. And then, wa again. Tabaraka. 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 Then you would 
read the K with the next word. Tabara kasmuka. Tabaraka asmuka. You could also say asmuka. So subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika wa tabarak asmuka. And then we have wa again. Wa ta ala jaddu ka. So we have it broken down over here. I'm going to see my mouse here. But we have wa ta ala jaddu ka. Wa ta ala jaddu ka. So when it comes to the ALA, we should be mindful of two things. Number one, try to pronounce the first A with your throat, okay? So you notice I'm not saying what the ala jadduka. I'm not saying what the ala, what the ala, no. I am saying what the ala, a, a, from the throat, a. So what the ala, what the ala. So that's the first thing to point out or to to be mindful of when we're reading this is what the ala. Now the second thing is to stretch this a little bit. To stretch this a little bit. And where would you need to stretch? You would need to stretch where my where the where my mouse is pointing at right now is. What the ala ala? Okay, so in other words, you're saying it with your throat, and also you are stretching it a little bit. What the ala? Okay, tabarak asmuka wa ta'ala. And then after that, we have jadduka jadduka. So with the D here. You have to try your best to pronounce this letter D twice. So if I slow this down, Jadduka. You see how D is being pronounced twice? Jadduka. 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 Now to combine the two, right, without pausing, in between the two D's here, Jadduka, Jadduka, right? Ta'ala, Jadduka, 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 and then we have Wa again, La, Wala, next, Ilaha, Ilaha. This H, when we pronounce this, this is not to be said with the throat. It's just to be said um, without any kind of restriction in our windpipe, right? In our throat. Ilaha. So I'm not saying ilaha. I'm saying ilaha. See, over, over here, when it came to bihamdika, I said Bihamdika, bihamdika. Here I'm saying ilaha, ilaha. So to simply put it, we are pronouncing this letter H as it is. Nothing, nothing over the top, nothing special. Ilaha, and then gairuk, gairuk, G H, gairuk. Subhanaka, from the beginning. Subhanaka. Allahumma subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika bihamdika wa tabarak asmuka wa ta'ala ta'ala remember with ta'in uh, you know we have to say it with our with our we have to say this uh, with our uh, with our throat. What the ala, 
and then Jadoka. Jadoka. Remember the two D's I was talking about? Jad Doka. Jad Doka. Jad Doka. Wa. La. Wa la. Ilaha. Gairo. Let me go over this one more time with. Uh, with you know, while it's being said in its true form without pausing uh, as we need to in the beginning. Okay. So, Subhanakallahumma Subhanakallahumma Wa Bihamdika Bihamdika Wa Tabarakasmuka 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 Wa Ta'ala Ta'ala Jadduka Wa la Wa la ilaha La ilaha La ilaha Ghayruk 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 So let's go over the The translation of this in English This means purity From imperfection belongs to you so subhanakallahumma means purity from imperfection belongs to you like uh, this allahumma part is being translated by my god so purity from imperfection belongs to you my allah my god subhanakallahumma and you see here and and is being translated because of wa remember i said wa the letter wow in arabic generally means and okay so wa and bihamdika the praise also belongs to you bihamdika the praise also belongs to you. What this means is, blessed is your name. Blessed is your name. What ta'ala jadduka. What ta'ala jadduka means, your majesty, glory, and might is exalted your majesty glory and might is exalted and then we have at the end wala ilaha ghayruk wala ilaha ghayruk wala ilaha ghayruk there is no deity but you there is no deity but you. Okay? So purity from imperfection belongs to you, my Allah. And the praise also belongs to you. Blessed is your name. Your majesty, glory and might is exalted. There is no deity but you. So alhamdulillah, we went over the Arabic. We went over the translation. Now let's go over the spiritual symbolism behind these words. Okay. MashaAllah, it's already seven o'clock. So, Subhanakallahumma. After saying the takbir, after saying Allahu Akbar, the first words you are saying to Allah is Subhanakallahumma, which means purity from imperfection belongs to you. Purity from imperfection belongs to you is also being implied that what, what, what's also being implied is that oh Allah all the false proclamations and associations that people are making with you 
by claiming this and that about you. You are beyond all of those things. You are above and beyond all of those things. People are ascribing partners with you, oh Allah. People are claiming that uh, God is this, God is that, God has this, God has that, God doesn't have this, God doesn't have that, and all of those things which are not befitting to the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of God, is what is being referred to here, is, O oh Allah, you are pure from all kinds of associations, proclamations people are making. And what kind of proclamations, what kind of uh, associations and references people are making to you, O oh Allah? All those things which are imperfect, O oh Allah, amongst all those things, those things that are imperfect, O oh Allah, you are pure from that. O oh Allah, you are pure from that. And from different perspectives, you will, you will appreciate different meanings. Right? So, O oh Allah, some people say this about you, since that is, since that would imply that if that is true, then Allah would have an imperfection. And since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free from all kinds of imperfections, so therefore Allah is pure from that. And then this goes on. And it's beautiful that you, the it's beautiful that you say this first. Subhanakallahumma. And then you say, Bihamdika. Wa bihamdika. O oh my Allah, and the praise also belongs to you. When it comes to praise, you will learn more about this when we get to Surah Al-Fatiha as well, inshaAllah. But, and praise also belongs to you, O oh Allah. What that means is, O oh Allah, what better way to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than how he praised himself in the Quran? And for that, I want to quote a verse of the Quran to allow us to appreciate these three words here, wabihamdika, or these two words here, wabihamdika. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَلَوْ أَنَّمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ مِنْ شَجَرَةٍ أَقْلَامٍ وَالْبَحْرُ يَمُدُّهُ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ سَبْعَةُ أَبْحُرْ مَا نَفِدَتْ كَلِمَاتُ اللَّهِ What this means is, if you were to take, وَلَوْ أَنَّمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ مِنْ شَجَرَةٍ أَقْلَامٍ If you were to take all the trees in this world, and you were to turn them into pens, وَلَوْ أَنَّمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ مِنْ شَجَرَةٍ أَقْلَامٍ If you were to take all the pens in this world, all the trees into this, in this world, and turn them into pens, وَالْبَحْرُ يَمُدُّهُ And you turn all of the oceans in this world into ink. مِنْ بَعْدِهِ سَبْعَةُ أَبْحُرْ and you bring seven more oceans and then you turn those seven oceans into ink as well and you're left with 14 you're left with ink which is equivalent to 14 oceans and you begin to write the praise of Allah the praises of Allah, manafidat kalimatullah, all the pens that are in existence 
will break and all that ink, which is equivalent to the 14 seas, the 14 oceans, they will dry up, but Allah's praise will not come to an end. So understand that when you're saying bihamdika, again, is one of those examples that they're just two words, bihamdika, but understand and appreciate the magnitude of, of what you're saying. You're saying, oh Allah, all praise belongs to you. All glory belongs to you. All praise belongs to you. SubhanAllah. Next, وَتَبَارَكَ اسْمُكَ وَتَبَارَكَ اسْمُكَ Blessed is your name. Tabarak. Tabarak comes from Baraka. This word Tabarak comes from Baraka. Yeah, so Tabarak comes from the word Baraka. And we come across this term Baraka, right? There, there is Baraka in this food. There is Baraka in this money. There is no Baraka in that. There is no Baraka in this. So just to clarify, Baraka does not simply mean abundance. Baraka means blessing or blessings. So when we say there is Baraka something, that, that means Allah has blessed that thing and it is either being utilized for much longer than it was created for or Allah allows that thing to increase much more than expected. And what is Baraka and what is so, you know, how do we get baraka and uh, the different types of baraka in the Quran and implications behind all of that? Inshallah, Taala, that's a talk for another day. Um, you could say like a little, like a like a little seminar, but that's for another day, Inshallah, Taala. But when we say tabarak, it means blessings. So what tabarak asmuka, O Allah, your name, your name and your names, your 99 names, O Allah, are blessed. O Allah, O God, all of the names that you possess, all of the qualities that you possess are all blessed. And your majesty, glory, and might is exalted. Your majesty, glory, and might is exalted. Wa ta'ala jadduka. Wa ta'ala jadduka. So ta'ala means, comes from uluwun, or comes from, yeah, uluwun, which means something which is high. So, what uh, ta'ala means it's high. What is high? Jadduka, your majesty. O oh Allah, your majesty, your dominion, uh, your qualities are most high, most glorious and exalted. Wala ilaha ghayruk. What are you saying when, like, what, like, how are we supposed to uh, appreciate this when we're saying this in our salah, in our prayer? What are we actually saying? We're saying there is no deity but you. In other words, we are saying to Allah that we have adopted Tawheed, we believe only in you, O Allah. Wala ilaha ghayruk. 
there is none worthy of worship but you, O oh Allah. O oh Allah, the, you know, the symbolism behind that is that, O oh Allah, I am standing before you. O oh Allah, I am standing before you and praying only to you, O oh Allah. O oh Allah, I am not standing in front of anyone else or anything else to try to solve my problems. O oh Allah, I am standing in front of you. O oh Allah, I'm standing before you for you to solve my problems, O oh Allah. So Tawheed is to recognize and appreciate the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and shirk is to ascribe partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We find that shirk, ascribing of partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is of a few types based on context. There is a type of shirk. There is a type of shirk which is obviously called shirk, which is ascribing partners with Allah, but it is called a lighter type of shirk. Don't get me wrong, all shirk is shirk. All shirk is impermissible, not allowed, no justification at all, okay? But it's, you know, it's called, right? It's called uh, the lighter type of shirk. Now, what is that lighter type of shirk? Scholars explain to us that doing something, okay, let me take a step back, to worship Allah, to please anyone or anything else but Allah, which means showing off, right, is a type of shirk. Okay. So what is also being implied <clears throat> or what should be implied when we are offering our prayers is that, oh Allah, I am worshiping only you. And I'm not stopping there. Oh Allah, not only am I worshiping you alone, O oh Allah, I am worshiping you only to please you, O oh Allah. O oh Allah, there is no one else, there is nothing else worth pleasing but you, O oh Allah. But you, O oh Allah. O oh Allah, I am worshiping you alone. I'm worshiping you alone only for your sake, O oh Allah. Not because I am trying to impress anyone else or I'm trying to impress anything else. I am impressing, I am only trying to impress you and only you, O oh my Allah. Wala ilaha ghayruk teaches us sincerity. Wala ilaha ghayruk teaches us Sincere. So, Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika wa tabaraka smuka wa ta'ala jadduka wa la ilaha ghayru. Subhanallah. Hmm. Beautiful is that Allah that has made our salah beautiful. Beautiful is that Allah that has blessed us with prayer, with this full, with, with, which is so full of beauty and amazing, amazing things, subhanAllah. Sometimes we come across a situation, we, we come across how our fellow human beings of different religions, how they worship or how their methodology of worship is. And subhanAllah, you, in your heart, you thank Allah. 
you thank Allah that, oh Allah, you have blessed me with such a beautiful gift of salah. Respected brothers and sisters in Islam, everything that you and I have been prescribed to do in our lives as Muslims was sent down to us from the heavens through angel Jibrail, through angel Gabriel. Our fasting, our hajj, our zakah, you know, everything and like every command that our beloved noble prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam peace be upon him every command that he received and he shared with us through his beloved companions was set down from the heavens to the earth except one except one salah Prayer is such a noble act of worship that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took our, our beloved noble prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam into the heavens and honored him with that auspicious journey. And in that journey, he gave us by giving Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the gift of salah. So everything else that you and I have was given to us by sending angel Gabriel down to earth to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and salah this prayer that we're discussing in this seven week series is the only act of worship that is so honorable, so honorable that our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, peace be upon him, was taken into the heavens and was gifted, was blessed with this prayer. And inshallah ta'ala, when we go through the rest of these sessions, we will understand the magnitude of why Salah is so beautiful. Why is this prayer so beautiful? We will understand these things by us, as I like to say, unpacking the different gems, the different meanings the different explanations of what is being said in Salah. Respected brothers and sisters in Islam, prayer is so much more than simply reciting uh, prayers in Arabic, bowing down, making sajda, prostrating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then finishing our prayer is so much more than that. SubhanAllah. And, and that's why I'm so humbled and so excited that uh, Embrace Sacramento has allowed me to, to be a part of this. SubhanAllah. That salah, our prayer uh, should be beloved to us should be beloved to us. We should be looking forward to Salah. And when is the time for prayer for me to pray my Salah? Are there any questions that uh, you may have? Um, Um, I guess I'll, I'll start the I'll start the the round the round robin inshallah. Um, so <clears throat> this is a beautiful, subhanallah, beautiful dua, and I will make sure I post the uh, 
the Arabic and the uh, translation of it into WhatsApp and uh, send that out to email. I've had a few people private chat me and ask me. Well, are that. there any questions? Inshallah, we'll, we'll make sure that that There happens. has to be some question or some, some comment or some something. Come on. If you could say it one more time fluently or from start to end, that'd be nice. Uh, you got that email? Can you hear me? Any questions? Any comments? Um, there was one question. Move on to the next slide. I would. Oh, yeah. Assalamu uh, alaikum. Can you hear me? Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I could hear you now. So apparently I was talking to myself. <laughs> oh, so follow, so follow. Okay. Uh, yeah, I was going to say that um, a few people in the chat uh, have asked if we can post this, um, if we can post it. So I'll make sure that that happens in WhatsApp and, and an email. Okay. Uh, and then one of the sisters was asking, and I think there might have been some audio uh, technical things, but she was asking if we can go back and recite that one more time so she can really, uh, really, really catch it, inshallah. Uh, not a problem. So, Brother Rashid, uh, uh, and that's great feedback because, uh, to be honest, uh, I was not sure, was that going too slow? Was that going too fast? And I don't, you know, like, I don't want to, uh, you know, make anyone feel like you know, any, any uh, in, uh, to feel any strain uh, in any way. So I'm more than happy to go back and and go over those words in Arabic two times. No problem. Okay. okay. So again, Subhanaka, right? As you see on the screen, the first word, right? Subhanaka. 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 Allahumma. Subhanaka. Allahumma. Allahumma. Wa bihamdika bihamdika and then from the beginning subhanaka subhanaka Allahumma Allahumma wa bihamdika Bihamdika. So it's worth uh, pointing out that here in Allahumma, this H is pronounced just like the letter H in English. No, like nothing, nothing special. Whereas here in Bihamdika, this H here, if you can see the my mouse cursor here is it needs to be pronounced with the throat okay and what i mean by that is when you recite it when you say bihamdika you should be able to feel it in your throat so compared to ha when you're saying ha allahumma ha you're just allowing air to Pass through with ha, ha, ha. You are uh, restricting airflow just a little bit to make that sound of ha, ha, ha. So the same, behamdeka, behamdeka. So subhanakallahumma. 
And here's that H again, right in the beginning. The special H, I would like to call it. Special H is the letter Ha in Arabi, in Arabic. And the, connect, the correct pronunciation is from the middle of the throat. So Subhanakallahumma. You're not going to say Humma here. You're going to say, you're going to say Humma. And then you say, what? Bihamdika Taha. Bihamdika. And then, Watabarakas Muka. Let me break that down. What? Tabarak. Tabarak. What? Tabarak. Tabarak. Asmuka. 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 So, over time, inshallah ta'ala, you will be able to pronounce these two words at once. In, uh, instead of breaking it down, as I did. Right now, we're saying, Tabarak Asmuka. The correct, technically, the correct way is to pronounce them together. Tabarakas Muka. Tabarakas Muka. Tabarakas Muka. Again, from the beginning. Subhanakallahumma. Wa bihamdika. Wa tabarakas Muka. Wa ta'ala. Again, with the throat again. Special A. So H is, so there are certain H's in transliteration of Arabic which are special. And also there are certain A's in transliteration of Arabic which are special. And why they're special? Because they need to be pronounced with some kind of restriction of air in our throat. Wa ta'ala jadduka wa ta'ala ala Wa ta'ala jadduka Jadduka To break it down again Jadduka 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 Wa La ilaha La ilaha This is a normal H This is not a special H La ilaha Ghayruk Ghayruk um, and I know this, the beginning part, the Subhanaka um, Allahumma wa bihamdika. Um, I know this has been said too that if you dicker that a um, hundred times, you know, during the day, whether before salat or after salat, is also another beneficial thing to do. So this is just another um, another way of, I guess, doing your meditation and just sort of getting in that zone, uh, so that we can worship Allah um, even before we go into prayer. We can say things to get ourselves uh, keyed into it and focused. That, that's absolutely uh, uh, correct. Um, Inshallah ta'ala, you know, by, by going through not only this class, but our journey uh, regarding Salah, you will learn that there's so much to unpack regarding Salah, subhanAllah. There's so much to unpack. And the more we unpack and we find more and more gems and beautiful things in Salah, the more we will fall in love with Salah, the more we will have this yearning and desire to be in Salah. Um, it, is, it is said that if you have this yearning that you want to speak to Allah, you want to talk to Allah, pray Salah. And if you want that Allah talks to you, read the Quran. If you want that, you want to express, if you want to express yourself to Allah, you want to talk to Allah, pray Salah. If you want Allah to talk to you, open the Quran and recite the Quran. Uh, As-salamu alaykum. Alaykum um, as-salam. So this uh, dua, we say this before we start our prayer, before we say the tech view? No, we, we say this after the view. After two, please. Yeah. Okay. So, so uh, these are the first words immediately after the so. Salam alaikum. I had a quick question. 
Okay. Um, when you say the tech, top beer, when we say that in our prayer, but I've heard that um, just yelled out sometime in the masjid, you know, outside of prayer. So I just want to see if you had uh, any uh, comment on that and, and why whatever's done, it's with jubilation. So I just want, it's outside of the prayer. So can you give us some feedback on that? Yeah. So uh, outside of prayer, Allahu Akbar is, is referred to in many uh, uh, hadith uh, traditions of the Prophet وسلم, as a zikr, as a remembrance of Allah. Uh, what you also refer to, sister, is Sometimes in the masjid, like when somebody accepts Islam or something amazing happens and you say, Allahu Akbar, you know, takbir, Allahu Akbar, right? That is uh, basically an expression, right? That you're saying that all, you know, like, mashallah, like Allah is the greatest. You're implying Allah is the greatest that allowed this to happen today, right? So-and-so brother became a Muslim today, so-and-so Muslim, or so-and-so sister became a Muslim today, Allah is the greatest. You know, Allah, you know, guided her to the truth. So uh, that is basically the context. Yeah. That's how it's being said. We make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts this from us. He accepts that we're teaching and learning in this environment in this COVID environment virtually as well. May he make this a source of our forgiveness and us becoming his beloved. And may Allah unite us on a day of judgment and in Jannah the way he has united us here virtually so that we could have a good month there in Jannah to Allah. Um, and may he allow us to uh, be humble enough to remain students for the rest of our lives. I mean, yeah. Jazakallah, everyone, uh, and Imam, and, and thank you so much for those uh, those insightful words. Um, it's definitely mm -hmm. something uh, to pay attention to as we step into our prayer show. Um, Jazakallah, everyone. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum.